F&B has maintained its position then as the most valuable brand. And that is uh, for a second consecutive year. Jacques, let's kick things off a little bit with you. It's a huge honor, right? I mean, this must be really big. How big a deal is it in the context of things? This recognition is across all sectors, right? For, to have received a recognition that, uh, you know, from a trust perspective and an appreciation for what we bring to communities and societies out there, this mass is a massive accolade. And actually the award's not for us because the award's actually for our clients who support us that much and for communities that put us to the test and keep us on our toes and for our amazing team that responds to that. And we build on yesterday as we build for the future because obviously these accolades are not about the past, right? It is, a, it is a function of what we're setting up for the future. Strategies change over time. You know, you can get organizations, they drift from relevance in market and then they can steer themselves back uh, a little bit. You know, what is nice about the stage that we're in is that uh, we have a very relevant offering for what the market needs right now. You know, you don't just change these strategies over a weekend either. Uh, so we've had a multi-year investment into our, our platform-based you know, agenda and our digital executions and, and relevance in, in how we help you know, sort of stretch financial services very, very deep into society and communities on both the individual sides and commercial sides. And it's lovely to be recognized for that. You know? It's so, so awesome for our teams. You know? We work through the nights, we sweat and build and technology. And these are still games of inches. You know? And they, they, in the end, to be reflected and recognized for that contribution is a very, very special thing for us. Interesting times, certainly. Faye, the report says that the country's consumers rated F&B very highly on all brand equity metrics and is positioned as a particularly meaningfully uh, different brand. The last two years have changed the value uh, that customers perhaps expect from financial services as a whole as well, Faye. Um, how, how have you responded then, particularly, I mean, considering where things even currently sit? So the empathy is what we've had to elevate as a brand um, during this period, is understanding where the customers are finding themselves, whether it's in their individual capacity in terms of the cash flow relief measures that we've introduced all the way through to the businesses that have also been struggling over this time. And we know that they are the lifeblood of our economy, right? And you need to sustain them. So what help are we able to provide those businesses at a time like this who continue to keep people in employment and to create jobs? So effectively, I think we see our role in terms of, on the one end, adapting and evolving and ensuring that we're delivering to the customer and the market's context. But I think most importantly, I think the expectation from a customer perspective um, is that, you know, we get their context and we deliver that context also in a very seamless manner through our platform-based solutions. How have you responded to, to sort of that responsibility as a brand um, and in your role as well? There's a very special tagline that we have to our brand. This is helpfulness, right? In tough times, uh, those type of things get get tested, right? It's nice, it's easy to be helpful in good times, right? Mm -hmm. But in tough times, uh, you really get tested. And what, what I'm so proud of uh, as a team of a community of, of participants around helping first Rand, especially if in B in this context, there's so many partners that make us, you know, who we are. You know, many suppliers even to us, our own employees that, that ultimately facilitate this ecosystem to be available to society. You know, banks are not even like F and B, we don't, you know, if you think about us, we get we are owned by society. Community owns us, you know, and if community turns their back on you because you're not there to help and you don't reach out, you don't take that extra step and you reach out and you know, where the farmers go through droughts or where the businesses have to deal with pandemics, these are things that through the ages we've learned that you need to help your customers through that cycle. We've been able to put on display so much of this helpfulness. And our people on the ground have really reached out and gone that extra mile. You know, even in the times of lockdowns, the early lockdowns, when even the hospitals were quiet, the banks and, and the bankers and relief to clients and to keep businesses open and to keep doors, the credit committees, the technology teams, that it will build so much solutions for clients. It was a year in which we could put on display a little bit of our magic, of our helpfulness. How, do, how does a brand ensure that the message is still um, as, as you'd like it to be across those different times when your business is also being hard hit at that point in time, right? But you kind of have to maintain that stronghold and that message. What's helped us and, and what's held us in good state as a brand is essentially aligning to our core brand purpose, um, which is underpinned by our promise of help. 
And I think that has really allowed us to remain authentic to who we are during all sorts of seasons that we might find ourselves facing um, as society and as businesses and otherwise. So effectively, I think in terms of that purpose and uh, in being a trusted partner and demonstrating to our customers that we're journeying with them on this journey in, in terms of their financial solutions and that we're available to help them in terms of their financial management capabilities when we talk to our money management capability, our advisory capability and the like is essentially kind of demonstrating to them that you know, we have their we we have their backs. With us remaining true to our purpose and to this helpfulness, is that we keep ourselves honest through very clear sort of metrics as an organisation as well. Because I think in us keeping ourselves honest, is that we're able to reevaluate and kind of understand what's working, what's not working. Are the solutions that we're bringing to the fore really answering to the customer problems? Is the way that we're communicating effective and actually delivering against where the market is at and where they're finding themselves? Who we are and what we stand for as a brand has really enabled, I think, this resilience that we're experiencing and in turn um, getting us to this position and getting an accolade of this sort is that it's nothing new. We just keep responding and being responsive to the need of the market in line with what we stand for and what we believe in as a brand. How do you, from even from here, continue to do that? I think we always talk to the, the challenge that comes with staying at the top. And I think with that, is appreciating that, you know, our investment over time and commitment to data and, and analytics and the supporting technology is what enables us to understand where we find, where the market is at and where customers are at, but also that continually um, work towards the cut delivery in terms of the customer experience. Ensuring loyalty is probably just as difficult. How do you continue to do that? And I think the anchor is still always is customer need. You know, so uh, we obviously are very privileged. We've got a lot of clients who put us to our test and ask us to do so much more. So that's the one angle that you re you, you reference. And then the second is, you know, we love the market that is so vibrant with, you know, new entrants, established, ent you know, participants. And, and, and the innovation that's coming into the market are incredibly inspiring to us. You know, we look at the best that's out there, right? And so we love to reference those, to innovate around those. Some things we come up with, something the market delivers, and we innovate into those spaces. And you can sort of see where customer demand then gets satisfied. And our privilege is that we've got this massive platform to leverage, right? And it's about, you know, sort of mean, making meaningful difference. But I mean, I think the nice thing here is this massive uh, aspiration that once we're in front, you know, we want to stay in front. It's so amazing to see what this does for our community of employees and partners that that when what we do gets recognized, that uh, that, ma that matters. And then it inspires people to do so much more. You know, there's so much industry change all over and it's leveraging this new me mechanisms of data and technology and platforms that, uh, that inspires us to do so much more. So we'll watch the space. So as a brand, we're saying we can provide you with all these tools and these capabilities, but there's a role that you also need to play as an individual or as a business to actually take on these solutions and utilize them to the, your best benefit to take you to the next level. A big congratulations then FNB, huge honor and long may it continue. <music>